the Long March 5 performed flawlessly. It was a beautiful launch and staging, uh, and it is now on its way to the moon. And basically, it needs to do a couple of mid-course corrections, which one of which took place already, and then it will go into lunar orbit, and then uh, the lander will descend to the surface, and then the sample collection will start. It's absolutely spectacular. It's flawless so far through many multiple uh, maneuvers, and indeed, the international lunar science community is tremendously excited by this. What is the greatest challenge in the journey that now comes ahead? There's, there's numerous ones, actually, uh, because this has never been accomplished in this way before. The first is, of course, uh, descent and landing, and then there's complex operations to get the samples on the surface, both drilling as well as scooping, putting them into the top of the spacecraft, the ascent vehicle, lifting off, have to burn another engine, and then rendezvous and transfer of the samples, and then come back to Earth and land in Inner Mongolia at the landing site. So these are all really incredible maneuvers, and this is a great practice for China in terms of their operations for sending humans to the moon, because all these maneuvers will have to be done uh, by human spacecraft in orbit and on beyond as well. What should we be watching in the coming days? What constitutes a successful mission? Well, I think the return of the samples is the ultimate success. But at each step of the way, the way China is able to, and any nation uh, doing lunar exploration and beyond, uh, makes these specific steps, it all proves the technology that really is the engineering expertise and the management and operational expertise that permits scientists like myself and others in China and throughout the world to accomplish really important goals and objectives, understanding our own home planet, understanding the moon, which came from the Earth, and the early history of the Earth as well. So it's an amazing set of accomplishments, and we wish China well in this because we're all in this together. Thank you. Space was once a race between uh, the U.S. and the USSR. Is that all over now? Is this truly an international endeavor? Or is this still in some way about uh, national prestige? Well, I think it's both, actually. Pride and prestige, pride how we view ourselves and prestige how others view us, is really important for any nation. And yet, of course, we can't do all of this by ourselves. We shouldn't duplicate unnecessarily and international cooperation, as the United States is doing with the Artemis Accords, which we hope China will join in the, in the future, um, all of these things really help to defuse tense international situations. I think the International Space Station that we see right now is a good example of that, where the U.S. and Soviet Union went from being rivals uh, to detente and then entente, where they came together uh, to fly uh, cosmonauts and astronauts together in orbit. We hope that this will be the same with China uh, in the coming years. James, great pleasure to have you on the program again. That's uh, Professor James Head talking to us from Cape Cod in the United States.